Uh, my talk was going to be about product. It was going to be about backpack. It was going to be about Mad Lads. But over several conversations I've had in the last few days, I realized that you know, we're, all, we're all listening to product all the time. We're listening to what people are building. But one of the core things that we need more of in this space is sadly lacking. And, and I want to share our experience on how we built community, how we built culture. And I'll do it through a somewhat of a storytelling manner. And I hope there are some insights here that people will be able to pull from. I was going to show this a little bit later in the presentation, but this is the Mad Lads community. Uh, they wanted to say hi. They asked if they could be present with us on this presentation. They are very excited that this event is going on. And in general, they are just a wonderful group of people. I'm going to send them a little message here, say thank you before I go to the presentation itself. <laughs> Yeah, they, they, are, they are a killer group of people. And I think any project that can bring together a coalition of people in that nature is going to have a huge head start, a huge adv advantage for everything that they do. So my name is Tristan Iver. I am the co-founder of Backpack Wallet, Backpack Exchange, and Mad Lads. And as I said, I've changed my presentation. It's simply going to be one slide, and it's simply going to be about community and how community comes together to create culture and how that culture can bring your project forward. So a lot of us in crypto, as I was saying earlier, focus on product, focus on technology. We focus on tokens, on price. But we don't realize that the underlying aspect of everything that we're building are the people that are using our projects, that are buying these tokens, that care enough about what we're doing to talk about it to other people, and hopefully grow the pie, right? If enough of these people talk about what we're doing to their friends, over time, we'll have enough new people in the space that we can create something more meaningful. And again, this is like something super under-considered in crypto. People think of all these different financial engineering aspects, all of these different things, but they don't think about this core thing, which are the people. And in crypto, more than any other industry in the world, it's crucial to care about the people because everything happens on crypto Twitter. And if people don't care about you, they won't talk about you on crypto Twitter. They won't amplify the things that you're doing. And it's really, really hard to get distribution and to grow whatever it is that you're building. And that's unique to crypto because in most other industries, especially Web2, you build in silence, you're in stealth, you start getting some customers here and there, you start expanding your user base, and then slowly, once the product is mature and ready, you go out into the world and you, you sell it or you have users come and use your product. But in crypto, you're building in the open. Everything that you do is under the scrutiny of thousands of people. And you need to actually care about those thousands of people if you want the feedback cycles to be positive rather than negative. So I'm going to tell a story about how our community was built, how our culture was built. And I hope there are some insights that can be pulled from that for all of you as well. And then if I have time, I'll take a couple of questions at the end. I don't have a timer, so stop me if I'm going over. When we started Backpack at the very beginning, it was with this idea of XNFTs, which were decentralized applications that you could run in the wallet. It was this idea of wallet, which is similar to WeChat, where you have one app that you can do everything you want to do in crypto. But pretty quickly, we realized that just doing a product wasn't going to be enough. And we started thinking about how we could create a group of people that would be there for us throughout the entire journey of this company that we were building, of this thing that we were bringing forward to the world. And the way that we did it, I think, at that time was pretty unique. Now it's actually been used a few other times quite successfully. I think uh, Monad is probably the best other example I've seen doing a similar approach. But at the very, very start, we created mystery. We created so much mystery around this concept of XNFTs. And everyone was saying, what the fuck are XNFTs? Excuse my language, but WTF are XNFTs. That was the tagline at the beginning. WTF are XNFTs. And a lot of people in the ecosystem put XNFT in their username for Twitter, growing this mystery, growing this attention. We launched the Twitter. And I, I think people probably thought we were a stealth NFT project or something. But everyone wanted to know what these XNFTs were. And so all this energy was channeling into our only public channel, which was our Twitter. And we hadn't announced anything. We didn't say a single thing about what we were building. And we started posting memes, which I know sounds funny. But now with this recent meme cycle, I think people are realizing the power behind memes, behind memetics, behind things that people can get together behind and push forward to the world. 
And while we were posting these memes, we started realizing that some people that were engaging with us were higher quality than other people. And by that I mean some of these people created wonderful videos. Some of these people made hilarious memes. And they started posting these things to the initial memes that we were posting. And I pretty quickly realized, how do I channel this energy and bring those people together into a space so we could get to know them and get to have them be in some form representatives or users of what we were building? And I did that through a private Discord. And so essentially, I had this private Discord. It was invite only. And I would look at the replies to the posts that we were doing. And if somebody posted a really good meme, if somebody posted a piece of video content, if somebody posted a genuine message that seemed heartfelt, then I would reply with this GIF of a girl throwing a blue dodgeball at a little boy. And if you got that GIF, you are now in the Discord. And what happened really quickly from that is I realized you can train public behavior on Twitter. It's uh, you know, like, like, you know, like Pavlov's dogs or whatever. But people started realizing who was receiving that GIF and what behavior they had done to receive the invitation into the Discord. And all of a sudden, everyone was posting memes. Everyone was posting videos. And over the next few months, we were able to curate this community of five or 600 people in this private Discord. And we spent infinite hours with them. It, it wasn't just the act of bringing them together. It was the act of genuinely caring about each of these people that we had in this Discord and imparting our culture, our thought process, our vision for this company to these people. We spent so many hours in conversation and joy and laughter and you know, fun with these people. And over time, they became the backbone. They absorbed the culture that we wanted to have for our company, the vision we wanted to have for our company. And as we continue to expand everything that we were doing at this point, our community, that, like that Discord has 35,000 people or something, but that core 500 people have still been the backbone of the community of everything that we have done until today. And the, the moral of this story isn't stuff people into a private Discord and if they're early, they're going to love you forever because that's not how it goes. But it is that if you can get the right people together and you actually genuinely care about these people, regardless of who they are, of what country they're from, of how much crypto they own, you will have a diehard community who will bat for you no matter what it is that you do. And after forming this community, we pretty quickly realized that it wasn't just going to be enough to have them in the Discord. We needed to do something that brought them together and gave them a social expression to go forth into the world and represent themselves as our community. Not as any community, but as our community. And that's where Mad Lads came from. That's where this NFT idea, this NFT project came from as a way for this community to have a social identity that represented us out in the world. And as you guys may know or may not know, Mad Lads is by far the top collection on Solana. It's one of the top 10 collections in the world. And a big reason for that is because this core group of people are the most active community on Twitter. And going back to the beginning of the talk, the more active you are on Twitter, the more people you have batting for you on Twitter, retweeting your posts, talking to other people about what you're doing, the more distribution you get for your products, the more people that discover your products, the more people that use your products, the more revenue, the more whatever your metrics are that you start achieving. And so that was, that was the feedback cycle. And one other underestimated aspect from our regard, like we weren't considering this, was that if you have these super fans, if you have these super users, your product feedback cycles shorten and shorten and shorten because anytime you build something new, you throw these few thousand people into a Telegram channel or you make a special channel for it on Discord and they're your beta testers and not only do you have to not give them anything to beta test? They are over the moon excited to try things that no one else has tried. And then you get this feedback instantly. And you can iterate the product at such a degree that you don't have to go through the whole public release of people having negative experiences before they get to try the product. And so that was another very, very valuable aspect of all of this. At the moment, as I was saying, Mad Lads is doing tremendously well. Backpack Exchange is growing at a tremendous pace. The Backpack Wallet is also growing at a tremendous pace. And obviously, we have a top tier engineering product team. We have some of the best people in the world on our team. But a lot of this as well is the distribution that we get through this community that we've built. And I think I have a few minutes. I'd love to take a question or two if anyone has it. So there's one here in the front. Yeah, yeah. 
Hi, quick question. Uh, how do you fight scam or malicious users in your community? How do I think about them? No, how do you fight a scam? You know, uh, you enjoy community and then you got five DMs asking you for your private keys or something like that. Yeah, I, it's, it's, it's hard because both Telegram and Discord are actually terrible in that regard. It's, it's hard to have these open communities without giving access to people with malicious intent. But if you educate your community properly, they're unlikely to get scammed. So you need to tell people to use ledgers. You need to tell people that we will never DM them first. And you need to tell people that if anything ever sounds too good to be true on the internet, it is too good to be true. And anyone here that played RuneScape knows that's true. So, yeah. How do you take a existing Web2 community and then move them over? That's a really good question. I think it can't be through just giving them a token. It can't be through just talking to them about crypto. It has to happen because they actually care about you and your team and what you're doing. And that's why I was saying the genuine part earlier. I think a mistake a lot of teams make in crypto is they think that just throwing a bunch of people together in a community creates a community and a culture. You actually have to genuinely care about these people. And, and maybe I was programmed correctly spending my whole life on anonymous internet chat channels that I like talking to random strangers, but if you don't have that element, it's not going to work because people realize when things are not genuine. Okay, is that all right? Thank you so much, guys. Appreciate it.